Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mond. Welcome to Photo of Eagles Now. We're going to jump in the latest Eagles news rumor here on a Wednesday. Before we start today's video, we are so close to literally getting to 31,000 subscribers here on the channel. 30,703 right now. Let's just get up to 750. So 30,750 is our goal for the end of today. Hopefully, though, by the end of the week, maybe by the start of camp, just, just a couple of days away, we get to 31,000 subscribers. So help us out. Go down below and hit that red button. Right, let's go and jump to the latest, as I mentioned, Eagles news and rumors here on a Wednesday. We have a lot to go ahead and cover as we're so close to training camp. And I always keep saying this, want to hype you guys up. Training camp, the real news and rumors starts. How does Jalen Hurts look? How do the, the new wide receivers look, right? How does the new look defense look? We're all break that down next week. But right now, though, I want to jump into a recent ESPN article, which went into the 13, I think, most likely candidates for the NFL MVP. And one of them was Jalen Hurts. And it's interesting how they came to this conclusion because ESPN is done I'm not going to say a lot of knocking of Jalen Hurts but a lot of question marks around Jalen Hurts most of it coming from the four letter network and yet they went ahead and had a pretty nice article about some Jalen Hurts MVP hype so we'll dive into that so ESPN essentially went ahead and looked at 13 previous seasons from 13 different quarterbacks and tried to find a quarterback that would match the previous quarterback and therefore make a case for MVP. Are you confused yet? It's a little bit confusing, but essentially what they did was compare Jalen Hurts last year to Lamar Jackson in 2019 and how Lamar Jackson was good in 2019, a lot more of a dual threat quarterback in 2019, made it to the playoffs, lost in the first round, and then bounced back in 2020 and won the MVP. And that's kind of their pitch to go ahead and have a chance for Jalen Hurst to win MVP here in 2022. Now, they said some interesting stuff, and that's kind of what we wanted to focus on. Not necessarily, you know, Lamar Jackson versus Jalen Hurts, but I like what they did in terms of kind of give you an idea of what it could look like if Hurts were to win MVP, saying this, quote, Now, Hurts gets to prove whether he can follow Jackson in hitting new heights. He'll have more help after the Eagles use one of their first-round picks to trade for A.J. Brown, netting Hurts one of the league's most physically imposing wideouts. They will have all offseason to refine their offense around Hurts' talents and build a more robust version of what they transitioned toward in midseason. They also went ahead and said, if the skeptics are right, Hurts probably will get replaced by a new quarterback next offseason. If they're wrong, Hurts wins MVP. He probably will get $100 million in guarantees on a contract extension, end quote. So a lot there. Obviously, the addition of A.J. Brown should make Jalen Hurts' life a lot easier. And I like when they say the offense is going to be more refined around Hurts' talent. We almost forget that the first six weeks of the season last year, they were in shotgun with four wide receivers and threw the football 70% of the time, if not more. When they finally realized, wait a second, if we run first and then open up the passing game through the running game, this offense can be way more dangerous, and that's what we saw throughout the latter you know, quarter and a half of the season in 2021. And so if they're able to duplicate that and Hurts has a big year, they're right. He might not win MVP, though, but he at least can be successful enough to get that new contract, which we've talked about in the past. That would be north of $35 million and closer to $40 million a year. That's just what the going price is right now. Look at Dak Prescott. So, again, always fun to kind of do the what if on Jalen Hurts and MVP season. I could care less about how much money you have, you have to pay him. If he plays well enough to win MVP, give him all the money he wants. Because if he's winning MVP, Philadelphia is winning 12-plus games. They're winning playoff games, and it could be a very special 2022 season. Okay, add break pin comments down below. Will Hurts win MVP? Uh, yeah. Honestly, I don't think so. But will he come close? I mean, that's a different question. What do you guys think? Will he win MVP? Type Y down below for yes, or type N down below for no. Now, I want to go ahead and move over here to um, Jesse Bates. And we talked about Jesse Bates, obviously, in the past. I talked about him in a video that came out yesterday where I hinted at the story that we're going to dive into here in just one second. But essentially, CBS Sports talks about how uh, Philly could be the ideal solution for Bates and be like the best case scenario and the best fit. And there's even a recent report talking about Philadelphia inquiring about Jesse Bates. And I mentioned it in a video saying, you know, there could be a move pre-training camp and CBS Sports seems to be not guaranteeing that, not even saying it's going to actually happen, but at least hinting at maybe if he were to be moved, then Philadelphia could make a ton of sense. Before I get into that, I'm going to read you the CBS Sports uh, 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 quote here in just one second. First, the two-pack t-shirt combo is still on sale. It seems to be on sale the entire offseason. It still is there. I'm shocked each time I look at it in the mornings. Uh, Chatsports.com forward slash Eagles t-shirt is the link that you need. Get 40% off. And again, it's two t-shirts. So 40% off the price of two. So it's really just like the price of one for two. So it's a really good deal right now. Pick it up at Chatsports.com forward slash Eagles t-shirt. I always try to get one new piece of Eagle gear in the offseason. You can get two new pieces of Eagle gear, like I said, for the price of one. That link will be down below me right now in the description box. 
Okay, so here was what CBS Sports said as they ranked the top landing spots for Jesse Bates. Philadelphia comes in at number one. Again, no shock. They said, so Bates, who played on a Bengals team that employed current Eagles assistant head coach J Jamel Singleton, represents the ideal s solution for a quiet NFC East contender, end quote. And again, this is kind of the same nonsense we've heard over the past couple of months when it comes to Jesse Bates being like, oh, they, it makes sense to go to the Eagles. Not necessarily saying he is going to go to the Eagles, but it makes sense. And that's why I've kind of poo-pooed this story for the past couple of weeks. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. And I agree, it does make sense. But will it actually happen is a completely different you know, story and argument altogether. Now, he does make sense if the other safety stink, which maybe was why you might want to wait till training camp actually starts to go ahead and trade for him. Like maybe get a couple of weeks, a couple of practices underneath your belt. That way you can gauge Marcus Sepps in 11 on 11s. You can gauge Tart in 11 on 11s. Like we don't really know what these guys are going to be. And we talked about reports that have happened over the past couple of months where it's like, hey, Epps is looking good. Hey, we have a lot of confidence, confidence in Epps. But that's at OTAs, right? That's at minicamp. That's not at any sort of significant actual practice where you're actually having to make real decisions as a safety during live fire drills, right? AKA pads on with 11 on 11. So I, I think that I've said before many times, I trust the current safety depth chart and I do. I think it's going to be just fine. I think that you can win without having a star safety in the National Football League. That's been heavily criticized in the comments, but I'll continue to stand by it. But I'm still not going to sit back and say I wouldn't take Bates. Like I would take him right now. If they announce a trade, we'll cover it, obviously. But if they were to go ahead and get him, I'd be fine. I'd be thrilled. I mean, you add another Pro Bowler to the backside of the, of the secondary, you're creating one of the best secondary groups in the entire National Football League. So I don't want people to think that I'm anti-Jesse Bates. I just keep reading these little, you know, the Eagles should be trading for Jesse Bates. Or, oh, the Eagles are a great fit for Jesse Bates. It just doesn't do anything for me. I want to see report Adam Schefter, Philadelphia called about Jesse Bates today. Philadelphia working on a trade for Jesse Bates. And that's when I'm getting serious about trading for, for, for Jesse Bates. And until then, it's just kind of baseless rumors and speculation like you see on the CBS Sports article that we uh, listed a couple of minutes ago. Now, like I said, if they do, Go ahead and make a trade for Jesse Bates. Then it could happen the next couple of weeks. We'll cover it. I mean, I'll jump on here. Or one of the guys at Chat Sports will jump on here quickly. We'll do a video. We'll break it all down. It'll be the whole shebang. So make sure you guys go down below and subscribe uh, to join our crew here at Philadelphia Eagles now. Hit that red subscribe button as well to give you part of the latest and greatest Eagles content. As I mentioned, if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified whenever we drop the videos. And trust me, you want to have notifications turned on. All right, we'll end on a quick little fun story today uh, regarding Dallas Goddard. I, I think he is kind of the forgotten weapon on this offense because Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown and Quez Watkins and Zach Pascal and you have Kenny Gainwell year two, you have Miles Sanders in a contract year, like all these weapons, right? We forget about possibly the best weapon that you have, and that is Dallas Goddard. Now, maybe he might not be better than A.J. Brown, even though they play different positions, so it's not really you know kind of a comparison, but he at least is going to be facing a lot of really good one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and a lot of people think he's going to break out this year, including myself. ESPN went ahead and ranked the top tight ends in uh, going into the season, and he did make the list, as you see on your screen right there. Uh, Kelsey and Kittle, obviously one and two. No surprise. I mean, everyone's obsessed with these two, and rightfully so. They're great. Waller is fantastic. I think Mark Andrews is a little bit overrated. I'm not saying he's he doesn't ever be on this list, but I don't know about the fourth best in the, in the league. Kyle Pitts is way too high. That's kind of more speculation of what Kyle Pitts could do in 2022, but you can't base one year Kyle Pitts and be like, oh, he's going to be a top five tight end uh, versus, let's say, Dallas Goddard, who's one behind him on this list, where he has at least established himself as one of the better tight ends in the National Football League. But like I said, rankings don't really matter. What matters is where he's ranked at the end of the season. And I think he could easily climb into the top four, maybe into the top three, because he should dominate in 2022. You, you literally can't double it. Like, think about this offense. Even if you have a two wide receiver look and two tight ends on the field and you want to throw, th throw the football, he won't be doubled. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith are going to command so much respect from these cornerbacks and these secondaries that even if Goddard is balling out, you still can't put one of your better cover guys on him because you got to cover A.J. Brown or he's going to have a monster game, 8 for 125 and two touchdowns and just absolutely torch you. So it's fun to see him rank this high. And again, again it leads in and feeds into the hype we've talked about all year long about Philadelphia having an incredible offense with an incredible offensive line. And if Jalen Hurts is able to play well and Sirianni schemes it up right, which he should, this is going to be a very, very impressive and very, very good Eagle football team, especially on offense. Okay, over under eight touchdowns for Goddard in 2022. Type O down below for over. Type U down below for under. I can see him being a leading uh, touchdown receiving uh, weapon on the Eagles' entire offense, maybe even more so than Smith or Goddard, at least in terms of total touchdowns. Give me your guys' thoughts. O for o, uh, over, U for under. Let me know down below. 
All right, we'll end on this. We'll do a mailbag video, obviously, later on this weekend. And so make sure you guys go ahead and use the hashtag Eagles in the comments section to ask any sort of Eagle-related question. Uh, get those up now as soon as possible. Must be a subscriber to be a part of that because I'm going to pull the mailbag questions probably on Friday or maybe Thursday. So you get your question in quick. So go down below, ask any sort of Eagle-related question for a chance to be featured on the show later on this week. All right, for Philip Eagles now, producer Patrick, I am signing off. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your day. Get ready for training camp because I am so excited for that next week. And obviously plenty more content coming up later on this week.